do it before we sign the thing. Okay, I'd like to uh, call to order the meeting. If we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, we have a pretty uh, full agenda this evening. Uh, we're going to start with uh, recognition and announcements. Uh, Dana, I think you have a proclamation. Sure. Thank you, Mr. President. So today we're going to recognize the Garnet Valley High School 2022-2023 Unified Bocce Team. The Township of Concord, Delaware County, Pennsylvania is proud to recognize the achievements of young people in our community, whereas the endless hours of practice and dedication have allowed the 20 2022-2023 Garnet Valley High School Unified Bocce Team to achieve high honors. And whereas the Unified Bocce Team are the 2022-2023 Delaware County Champions and a state qualifier for Delaware, Chester, Montgomery, Bucks, and Philadelphia Counties and attended the state championship in Hershey, placing eighth in the state. And whereas these Victories are quite an accomplishment thanks to the support from their parents, community, and coaches. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Council of Concord Township does hereby acknowledge and applaud the outstanding accomplishments of the 2022-2023 Garnet Valley High School um, Unified Bocce Team. This is passed and approved on May 2nd, and this is a form of a motion. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying hi. 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 Is anyone here from your organization would like to accept the award? Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> we did? Wow. We were just told Joel, Joel Embiid <laughs> is the MVP of the N NBA, Ooh. which is well deserved. We ought to do a resolution. No. Yeah. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. <laughs> we're going to jump from it. I think we're going to. Um, Go out of order here a little bit. We're going to go with item number three. Mr. Crossan, I think you have a uh, recognition. It is an honor. We have uh, 18,300 residents here in Concord Township, but very few of them uh, get to receive the award of being centenarians, centenarians uh, turning 100 years old. And so uh, I would like to uh, propose the certificate of recognition to Mary Cherlino in sincere and grateful recognition of her remarkable achievement of 100 years of life and invaluable contribution of her wisdom, experience, and longevity this uh, second day of May. Mr. President, I move. That's in the form of motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, we are doing more and more of these during the course of the year, um, which is great. Uh, in Concord County. And we went to, uh, they had a, a birthday celebration for her at Ivy Creek, uh, there behind Brenton Lake where she resides, and I was honored to be present uh, with her and all of her friends there, as well as the fire company, to honor her. Uh, next, we just want to um, recognize an award that was given by the Heritage Commission of Delaware County to Mr. Uh, Mike Gogler for the restoration and preservation of the Sharpless House. Uh, he won the uh, Heritage Commission in Delaware County, received the Preservation Award for the Sharpless House in the Site Preservation category. The Commission was impressed with the quality of the restoration and attention to detail. You were nominated for this award by Concord Township Historical Society. So um, there's a uh, presentation ceremony on Saturday, May 6th. Mr. Gogler, you're, you're here. Please stand and be recognized. And <laughs> We also want to recognize his wife, Sharon. <laughs> Sharon's there too? Okay, great. Anyway, thank you for uh, buying this place and restoring it and making us proud here in Concord Township to have one of our historic structures restored. Uh, Mr. Gauger, 
John Gillespie. I'll be there on Saturday when you get your award. Thank you. I think you said thank you. Uh, nothing. Uh, let's do number five, scholarship award winners. Dana, I think we've been doing this for many years, and you and John Gillespie uh, review the uh, applications, and I think you've selected four students. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. So this year we had John Gillespie and I had the honor of reviewing um, Concord High School residents that applied for this scholarship. Um, we had seven um, applicants and uh, they made it very difficult for us to narrow it down to um, our four winners for tonight. So our first winner goes to Katie Kinzel. Katie is a Garnet Valley High School student whose leadership has had her involved in many activities, including the Peer Buddies Club, Interact Club, Peer Counseling and the Varsity Club. She was also a member of the Cross Country Indoor and Outdoor Track Team and served as captain during her senior year. Concord Township Council recognizes and congratulates Katie for her accomplishments on being the recipient of the 2023 Concord Township Scholarship Award and wishes her much success as she continues in her studies in biology. Our next recipient is Noah Gray. Noah is a student at the Christian Academy whose leadership has had him involved in many activities, including Adopt a Highway, student government, baseball team manager, and captain of the club soccer team. He also served as a student ambassador, made the National Honor Society, assisted with childcare at his church, and served on mission trips to New Mexico. Concord Township Council recognizes and congratulates Noah for his accomplishments on being the recipient of the 2023 Concord Township Scholarship Award and wishes him well um, in his success as he continues his studies at Grove City College. Our next recipient is Olivia Berkskire. Olivia is a Garnet Valley High School student whose leadership has had her involved in community by volunteering many events throughout the township including the Newland Gristmill, March of Dimes, Salvation Army, Oasis Fun Night, and the Garnet Valley Minithon. She is co-president of the Garnet Valley Photography Club and was a member of the National Honor Society in her junior and senior year. She also managed and designed social media and website for a local realtor. Concord Township Council recognizes and con congratulates Olivia for her accomplishments on being a recipient of the 2023 Concord Township Scholarship Award and wishes her much success as she continues her studies at the University of Pittsburgh. Tasia C. Dantu is a Garnet Valley High School student whose leadership involved many community service initiatives, including the Interact Club, Charity Crossing, Piano Leader, Garnet Valley Minithon, and STEM for a Good Cause. She was a program director for Girls Unite for Defense, which strived to empower girls through lessons on self, cyber, and legal defense techniques. As director, she helped create lessons that are shared with girls around the country and abroad. She has served on the Interact Club and was co-vice president of Annensburg Science Synthesium. She was a member of the National Honor Society and World Language Honor Society in her junior and senior years. Concord Township Council recognizes and congratulates Tasia Spee for her accomplishments on being the recipient of the 2023 Concord Township Scholarship Award and wishes her much success as she continues her studies in computational media at the Georgia Tech Institute of Technology. Congratulations, everyone. That is a, I think we're gonna, we're gonna need a set, we're gonna need a second to make it official. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 I think if we could get the uh, award winners up here, we'll do a picture, please. Let them get in the front and we'll do Back into the program then. Good. I, I, yeah, I just I figured that out. Thanks. I haven't done this in a while. Um, 
Benita, I think you have a proclamation that you're going to read into the record too. We are very proud to, to announce today of this proclamation, uh, recognizing <clears throat> MRN Chauncey for the 2023 Washington Journalism and Media Conference. Whereas the Township of Concord, Delaware County, Pennsylvania is proud to recognize the achievements of young people in our community. And whereas it has been brought to our attention of Concord Township Council that MRN Chauncey a junior at Garnet Valley High School has been selected as a national youth correspondent to the 2023 Washington Journalism and Media Conference at George Mason University. And whereas Ms. Chauncey was chosen to attend this prestigious journalism conference based on her academic accomplishments, pro proved interest and demonstrated excellence in journalism and media studies. And whereas Ms. Chauncey will join a select group of students from all over the country for a unique and intensive study of journalism and media. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Council of Concord Township does hereby acknowledge and applaud the outstanding accomplishments of Ms. MRN Chauncey and wish her luck at the Washington Journalism and Media Conference to be held July 9th through July 14th, 2023, and it is in the form of motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Emma, you want to come forward and get your... Uh, it was perfect timing, too. Congratulations. Okay, upcoming meeting and events uh, on May 4th, the Park and Rec Board meeting. May 6th, the Volunteer Park and Trail Cleanup Day, 9 a.m. at the Coleman Track. That's the park at Smith Bridge and Temple Roads. May 6th, Concord on the Move Dance Party, 7 p.m. in the BYC Gym. Larry, you're, you're a big proponent for that. You're going to do a line dance or something? You do your best Travolta? Um, May 10th, Lawn Debris Pickup Day. Sign up is required. Visit the website for more information. May 10th, the Historical Commission meeting. May 15th, Planning Commission meeting. May 16th, Primary Election Day. May 17th, Zoning Hearing Board meeting. May 20th, World Diversity Day event, 12 p.m., Smith Bridge Park. Again, check the website for more details and information. Um, May 29th, the Township offices are closed for the holiday. And May 30th, the council attend the meeting as needed or if needed. Uh, next, uh, monthly reports, public safety, Vanita. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everybody. Based on the marsh fire marshal's report, we had, <clears throat> we had today, uh, we had a total of five fire events, of which one of, was a structure fire, one was a brushwood fire. We also had a vehicle fire this month. There were three other electrical and mechanical incidents. Thank you to the fire department for all your efforts in helping our residents. To round off our spring safety tips for this month, if you do see any signs of car fire, pull over as soon as you can do safely. Turn the engine off, get everyone out of the car, and stay at least 100 feet away from the car. Do not open the hood because flames could flare up and call 911. Do not go back to get your phones or any other items from the car. It is very important to avoid vehicle fires by keeping up with the scheduled maintenance and annual inspections. Do not park on the grass with the summer coming up, especially tall grass, enough to touch the parts of a hot, uh, hot car parts in the, um, under the car. Loud noises and exhaust systems can be an indication 
that the car needs to be checked up and tuned up. In regards to home fires, <clears throat> please keep an extinguisher that is approved for, for home use. And you need to remember the PASS pass system with the fire extinguisher technique. P for pull the pin on the extinguisher, aim the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and sweep at the fire moving side by side. Please drive safely and watch for any fire hazards that you may see. Thank you. Thank you. Open space trails and recreation, Mr. Crossing. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, last month, we approved a resolution um, moving to become an official Pennsylvania bird town with the Pennsylvania Audubon Society. And uh, we have been approved and accepted as the 40th member of the Pennsylvania bird town group uh, and the sixth in Delaware County. Uh, they will be here at our council meeting to present us our official designation at, uh, the, I believe, the July council meeting. Uh, the Easter egg hunt I mentioned, um, we had 8,000 eggs uh, consumed very quickly last month. We now know it was only 250 kids that did that, uh, but <laughs> very impressive. Um, we had uh, a successful uh, yoga in the park as well as um, uh, bar less, bar, you know, bar balanced in the park and as well as also an Earth Day uh, bird walk and nature walk. Um, we have uh, the Newland Grist Mill uh, in Concord Township has so far raised $5,000 out of the $10,000 goal in sponsorships and the race for the watershed. Um, and so if you haven't yet purchased a, a rubber ducky for the race for the watershed, we encourage you to do so. Uh, we had, uh, we're, we're exploring <coughs> programs and bus trips um, and we received a limited number of responses uh, with regard to um, interest in those, so we're evaluating whether or not we, we move forward with bus trips next year. And the Parks and Recreation Department has uh, inst initiated a new sponsorship program for all of our summer events that are occurring, and i um, happy to announce that Team Toyota has signed up as uh, the presenting sponsor at a $10,000 level. All these costs go to offset the cost of putting on all their wonderful summer programs. Um, the events that we have coming up, you mentioned this Saturday, we have the trail cleanup at 9 a.m., a uh, meeting in Smithbridge Park. Uh, and then once you're done uh, getting dirty, you can do yoga in the park at 10.30, um, and then go dance and get more dirty at 7. Um, okay. And uh, that's all I have. We have uh, uh, some uh, open space announcements uh, and resolutions later in the program. Thank you. Uh, Soar in Public Works, Mr. Gillespie. Uh, yes, the uh, monthly report from our sewer department uh, it responded to 79 Pennsylvania One calls. They checked and maintained all pump stations and generators and cleaned the main, effluent, main plant effluent outfall. And regarding the budget highlights and performance measurements, capital projects update, currently waiting on Concord Road North sewer installation to begin, which we believe will be May 8th and uh, all other projects are in the planning stage regarding plant performance. We are hauling sludge at normal rates and have no major equipment issues, treating approximately 1.2 million gallons a day. On the public works side, the department highlights uh, Partridge Lane storm sewer repair and curbing, the sand volleyball water fountain because of endless clogs of sand in the drainage system, uh, the the uh, rerouting of the old pipes were done and to prevent future clogs. Some signage upgrades were made on Route 202 and the road form and promotion. In Public Works, our staff member, Jonathan Dougherty, was promoted to road foreman. End of report. Okay. Building and Code Enforcement, Colleen. Thank you. Um, total permits processed for April. We had 70 permits. We issued 20 certificates of occupancy, and we had 10 residential resales and one commercial resale. As far as new businesses and renovations in the township, the Pink Turtle moved suites in Glen Eagle Shopping Center. Shoot Hoops at 255 Wilmington Westchester Pike opened. Iconic Windows opened. Chick-fil-A. Um, is removing their playground to add more seating, and Concord Country Club received a partial CO for their pro shop. Future businesses we have coming in, we have Tai Chi Bubble Tea coming into the Town Center, Good Feet is coming into Glen Eagle Shopping Center, 
Empower Me Rehab is going into Glen Mills Senior Living. TLE, the learning experience, is going in at 43 Dougherty Boulevard. Clear Choice Dental, going in at Gateway Building 223 Wilmington Westchester Pike. And Morningside Cafe is going in the former Concordville Pharmacy near Ravenisi Pizza. Thank you. Um, Planning Commission, Larry. Uh, Concord Township Planning Commission letter for April. Um, sadly, this will be the final letter from Sean Lawler, the current chairman. That'll be mentioned later in business news. news. He will be greatly missed. Uh, the Planning Commission agenda meeting was held on April 10th, 2023, and the public meeting was held on April 17th, 2023. Current projects, the Planning Commission recommended approval of Premier A2 Chadsport a LLC LD application at 366 Wilmington Westchester Pike. It's folio number 13000104600. Um, they did that way back at their November 21st, 2022 public meeting. Um, scheduled for the month, the agenda meeting will be held on May 8th, 2023, and the public meeting will be held on May 5th. Thank you. Okay. Uh, solicitor, Mr. Donahue. Yes, be advised that there are no new scheduled hearing dates as far as Concord Ventures is concerned. Uh, there is no other litigation involving the township at this time. Uh, and uh, Mr. Hempel had brought to our attention uh, at the last meeting that with respect to Concord Ventures, the transfer records only indicated that 40 acres were transferred and not the full 60. Uh, and as of three weeks ago, uh, our inspection uh, reveals the same information. And that's all I can tell you at this time. Thank okay. you. Township Engineer Nate. Sure, just a few items that aren't already on the agenda. Uh, first, working with Public Works, we're gonna be adding some line striping, center line line striping to Matson Road between 322 and Concord Road, just to assist with vehicle travel there. Uh, deer crossing signing, signage on Featherbed Road uh, near um, our, one of our most recent parks, which is escaping me. Uh, Hillsborough Preserve. Hillsborough. Yeah. Hillsborough, thank you. Uh, as well as we uh, improved the signage at 202 at the intersection with Smithbridge, both northbound and southbound. Uh, we refreshed the pedestrian crossing, do not enter type signage over there based on some recent complaints. Uh, we met with the residents on uh, at John Beal in Shavertown regarding some speeding complaints and hopefully uh, we'll have a proposal for you guys to discuss at the June meeting. Uh, we've applied to PennDOT for two, we're potentially applying to two grants at PennDOT. One would be for an improved pedestrian crossing on Cheney Road at the Newland Grist Mill. Second would be improved pedestrian crossings on Concord Road at Riviera at Concord at that, age, at that neighborhood. Uh, so there are three potential crossings. We submitted what's called a scoping application to PennDOT. They came back and they will say, hopefully over the next week or two, yes, this is a potential grant project. If so, we will then submit this summer for those projects, requesting a 100% reimbursement from PennDOT for those installations. Uh, the last two items I have here, um, the Beaver Valley Pocket Park. We had a meeting with the adjacent residents uh, back on April 3rd. And at this point, we are in the process of scheduling a public Zoom meeting. That'll be on May 25th. I'm sorry, let me check that, May 22nd. At seven o'clock, that'll be a Zoom meeting. Uh, we'll be working with the township to send that out, uh, but just have a larger discussion about the potential park in that location now that we've met with some of the adjoining property owners and understand their concerns. Um, second, we have scheduled our initial steering committee meeting for the First State National Park Trail Connector. Uh, that's gonna be later in May, and we'll be reaching out to that group over the next week or so. Uh, that's all I have, unless there's any questions. Any questions? Uh, Nate, last night at, we had a, an HOA meeting uh, with heads of HOAs, and uh, someone brought up uh, the desire for left turn signals at the intersection of Route 202 and Beaver Valley Road and Neiman's Creek Road. Um, those are not part of the second turn lane that's being added, correct? And is there any uh, word on, on any progress that we could make with PennDOT regarding those? So you're gonna stomp me. Um, so we're referring to the intersection of, of 202, and, 202 and Beaver Valley slash Namens Creek. So as part of that project, you've seen some of the um, signage go up for some of that work. Ultimately, that project is going to add a dual leftbound turn southbound on 202. As part of that, we did coordinate with PennDOT and we are installing a 
flashing left turn signal coming out at Beaver Valley. So that is part of the project. The specifics of what, I'm not exactly sure, but I remember Colleen, it was a big proponent of that, and we did get that added to the project, and I can look through my files as the meeting goes along and double check that. Is there any dedicated left turn? There's not enough, not enough spacing there. Signal plan to go south on 202 from Naaman's Creek. South, on, I'll double check that as well. Okay. That, 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 that I think was the one, is if you're coming Naaman's Creek. I might have it mixed up, that's what I'm gonna double check. You wanna make the left onto 202 south. Yeah. We added a left turn, I'll confirm. I remember we talk. talked about this, I think you were on the board yet, yeah. first time. Yeah. Uh, and because of the width of that intersection and something didn't line up, it was very difficult to control that movement in a um, safe and effective manner. So if we could look into that again. Nate, uh, do we have any update on their, their scheduling? I know that they started the work, but they've not, and I guess it's been raining this week, but yeah, we, there's really been nothing done for... No, we, we actually reached out to them last week just to get the, the project manager's name. Uh, Dan Moyer and I are reaching out just to get a little bit better coordination. Um, there is going to be absolutely going to be pain when they do some of those lane shutdowns. Um, let's be real, there's just nothing you can do there with that volume. But again, we're trying to seek to, to minimize that pain as much as possible. And the more we know about it ahead of time, the better we'll be off. So trying to do a little bit better job with Penn, I think it's some more coordination. So we have made that outreach last week. I think my colleagues would agree, but when you do know something on that, perhaps, Amanda, we immediately put it out on a blast on the website or something. Sure. Just to keep everybody aware of what's going on. Okay. Yes, we we can update the website and social media. Well, that's perfect timing, because now it's your report. All righty, here we go. I got uh, some, some, some stuff. So uh, one thing I just want to make a note for uh, residents. So uh, recently, and I know with better weather, uh, this happens, but um, we've had a lot of um, dogs off leash, particularly at this property, at uh, the 43 Thornton Complex. Um, we have off-leash areas in the dog parks. Otherwise, you cannot go into one of our parks or onto one of our properties and just let your dogs out of the car and sort of roam around. Um, we've had this happening at the pickleball courts. Folks have had their dogs actually running in the pickleball courts, which affects our surface, um, which we've spent a lot of money on. Um, additionally, we have it uh, happen over here at our playing fields. Um, and uh, around our tracks, uh, our walking tracks. And um, luckily all the um, pet owners who I've stopped or our team has stopped have been gracious and just didn't realize that you know it wasn't appropriate for them um, to do that. But I just remind folks that I have a dog myself, but not everybody's a dog person and people get very nervous when they see a dog off leash that approaches them. So please be respectful of all the residents using our parks. Um, that's how we're able to keep all of these things open for everyone, our residents and fur residents alike. But um, I just wanna make sure everybody really understands um, that concept. Uh, it is very important for the safety for all. Um, the other thing I wanna, speaking of safety, I wanted to reiterate, we talked about this about a year ago. Uh, the township is working additionally on some of the safety plans we have in the building. Um, and I wanna make sure residents understand, uh, we started out with the cameras and the buzzers and uh, we will be um, doing some safety enhancements in our lobby areas as well, uh, just to make sure for residents and staff uh, that everybody, uh, that safety is in mind for all. Um, uh, we also are starting, speaking of staff, summer hours, which we do every year uh, between May and Labor Day. Um, and uh, staff is in earlier uh, during the week and then on Fridays leaves a little bit early at two o'clock. Notifications are up on the website and posted at the door um, for folks. Uh, if anyone has any questions, let me know. Um, additionally, the last thing that I have is the county recently sent out information to us that they will be taking over the sewage enforcement role um, for the municipalities. Uh, they're hoping to do that June 1st. I am unsure how that is gonna happen when we have not had coordination with our SEO officer at this point, and it's May. So I don't know if that'll transition June 1st um, and, and how that's gonna work out, but we are working with the county um, and our SEO uh, officer, which is James Callahan, is working on making sure that's a smooth transition for our residents. So I just wanna make sure I announce that, that the county does intend still to take over that function. Um, and that's for private sewer um, and their role in that. 
Command, I, I'm thinking that uh, when we get further along in this process, uh, if they're shooting for September 1, perhaps the end of June or July, I, I think I'd like to meet with them. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of what the qualifications are going to be for the inspector the county is going to hire. Um, the county's um, uh, public health center, I think, is in Yaden. Mm -hmm. I think they're doing a great job with the restaurants and things like that, but I think a septic inspector qualifications are important, but I also think the skill sets he brings by years of experience are even more important. Sure. So I think we ought to get that done because we do have a community with some older sites with older systems that might just need some TLC rather than telling a homeowner he's going to have to go to a pump and haul or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So I anticipate reach out um, other than a letter. So we're waiting to hear from Okay. Them. Sounds good. All right. Citizen comment. Anybody with any comments or anything uh, before council, if they would come up to the podium. Uh, I need your name and address, Ken. Campbell. No worries. No worries. Ken Hempel, 17 Mill Race, but no. 39 Mill Race. What was the number? So would this county inspector like be checking out septic sites, se septic systems too? Yes. They're and taking that away from the municipalities. Yes. And, and had they like issued criteria on what would constitute a failing septic system? No. No, they'll be following the law, you know, That's why whatever DEP. Uh, they've already coordinated with DEP from what I understand. Um, we talked probably a year ago about it and we're, will, you know, obviously transitioning documents and things for them. The state holds all the documentation for the municipalities on um, anyone with a septic system. So they have gathered that information from what we understand. They just have not communicated with our staff on exact roles and things happening. Um, most, I, I mean, I don't know if I'm speaking, but a, a large part of Delaware County is, you know, public seward. Um, so, you know, you're talking about certain western suburbs and, and some other of the larger ones where. That's why I think we'd want to meet with them in advance. Yeah. Would they conduct all the lateral inspections at home sales? Um, no, for the tie-ins to anything? I'm not, I'm not sure. If that's not something that would be subject under the act, I'm not sure that they would actually it, be doing that because a lot of times that tends to be a municipal function. If it's connecting to public sewers, that requires a plumbing permit, so that comes back in-house. Okay. This is just the septic systems. But you're asking oh, about resale, resale inspections of systems. Yeah. At, you, okay. you guys have a contractor for that? <clears throat> we, we do that in-house okay. now. James does it. He right? checks the septic systems on a resale. Yes. Yeah, so what happens is they fill out paperwork when you have a resale on their septic information. Last time they've had work done, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they actually have an expert come in who says whether or not the system is um, uh, uh, good um, or failed an inspection. And then from there, we, we jump in and, and take care of it before a sale happens. I, I think everything is ultimately going to be fine, but I do think we need to have... Yeah, just, we just need communication. Pre, we need to have yeah. a pre-game meeting so we know what's going on. Yeah, and, and Ken, just to clarify too, real quick, guys, it's, it, Chester County, this is how Chester County does it, so it's doable. It's, oh. get, it's getting from here to there is the tricky part. Yeah. And just understanding what we need to do as a township and, and how that all happens. But it is doable, and at, at the end of the day, Chapter 73 of the state code dictates yes. septic permitting. So it's not a local, it's, it's a statewide ordinance, so. Yeah. So I'd like to put in a request <clears throat> for the trail that leads out the back of the complex. It's, it's very circuitous. It's like got a lot of switchbacks. I'm wondering if, if there could be a trail straight up the hill at some point. I don't know if that's... You're looking for easy. a double black diamond? Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. something. <laughs> so I walk maybe, here. Maybe we I, for I walk for and maybe I walk here. You just go for it. I think dark. we'll do it. We'll, we'll get some of the goats to climb it. Yeah. If, we had, if we yeah. had snow, it could be a, uh, a, a snow event. But no, it's, it's a very steep hill. And it was very carefully designed to be in the serpentine uh, direction. Well, some of the switchbacks actually head back downhill when you're going up the hill. Uh, <laughs> it's true. But, all right, thanks. Thanks. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hi. Uh, Shelly Chauncey, 547 Concord Road. I just first want to say thank you for recognizing my daughter and all of her hard work that she's been um, doing. And she, I, I need to keep up, basically, what, what I'm saying <laughs> to myself. Um, I did want to bring something to Council's attention. Um, chapter 120 of the zoning ordinances pertaining to and created for the purpose of discouraging and preventing establishments 
from disguising themselves as legitimate uh, businesses when in fact they are promoting prostitution. Um, while the ordinance in itself is not an issue, there is a definition in the ordinance that is very concerning to myself and individuals of the LGBT community, um, uh, which there is a large portion of here in our community and in particular at the high school. Um, prostitution in that ordinance is defined as, quote, homosexual and other deviant sexual relations. Um, I imagine this is, as I'm sure you do too, this is a very outdated description um, by comparing um, these uh, a homosexuality to deviant sexual relations and to prostitution. I think it's a very harmful and outdated description that council should seriously take a look at, That's considering. A very well, yeah. point well taken. If and well, we are updating presently the code, and we are in the process of doing that, and we have already looked at that, uh, and we'll certainly take your remarks under consideration. Absolutely. I thank you very much for your time. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Name and address, please. Maureen Hewitt, 19 Brook Lane, Chadsford. Mm -hmm. How are things coming along at Bush Hill Farm? Yeah, you know, I didn't update on that. I apologize. Uh, no we had our last steering committee back at the end of March. So we had our steering committee meeting. Um, we all agreed we're going to get rid of the dog parks. And <laughs> I'm just <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm just teasing. That was not agreed upon, Maureen. That was not agreed upon. I wasn't was the meeting had our We had our last meeting back in March. Um, I think we've got some really good ideas from the steering committee. We had about, um, I think, three or four different meetings on site. Uh, our office right now is preparing essentially a master plan for the site, taking all of those ideas in, kind of framing them out on stuff that we could do over the next, you know, zero to three years or three to five years, things of that nature. You know, if I had to put a pin on the whole thing, it's it's going to be a passive type park, and keeping right. that passive type uses is, is pretty much the framework. We bounced around all kinds of ideas, but it kept coming back to that. So everything kind of goes into that same same world. So I don't know. I can't commit to the June meeting, but at some point we'll have the public. You know, we'll have this plan on the township website. We'll have it here in a meeting, kind of for final discussion, council adoption, things of that nature, before we can close out that project. But I'm optimistic we'll have something that everybody's going to like. Great. Thanks so much. Hello, my name is Tina Wallace, 6 Macomb Avenue, Glen Mills. Uh, I own a property on Macomb Avenue directly across from that new property development that you have going on, the storage faculty. Uh, I'm sorry I wasn't here last week or the last month, uh, but I'm having a problem already. We have trucks, big trucks, coming through that little tiny road. They have chewed up, tore up that road so bad. I have constantly filled holes. And I'm saying holes so big that when my son drove over, it ripped the whole front of his car. It tore the whole thing up. He just dropped out like two feet right down. The damage to the road is so extensive. And I'm partial owner of that road. I try to keep my end up as much as possible. Uh, the man who owns the other side, I think, is a developer who has it up for lease. It's just open land right now in the center. Uh, he hasn't done much of anything to it, and I imagine he feels frustrated by having trucks come through there all the time too. Richardson's has an open entrance onto that road into a parking lot there. I'm sure you know, right on Macomb Avenue, as soon as you turn in, going north, his driveway's right there. He has a giant, giant hole there, never fixed it in two years. Not my problem, his, but rather than having his trucks pull into his parking lot, he has his big trucks coming through the whole road and then pulling into the southbound 202 to go into his. So what he's doing is he's using our road rather than his parking lot. You understand what I'm saying? I have issue with all of this. Um, we do try our best to maintain it. It's a shame, I feel sorry for the postal worker who has to drive that road when she delivers mail. On my side, she's fine. But when she tries to deliver the mail, otherwise she's dodging giant holes so she don't tear up her truck. If I'm not mistaken, that is a private road. It is a private road, and I own part. The other man owns part. And Morale owns the other And man. Richardson owns part. Richardson hasn't done anything since he paved. 
Do you want to know how much had, help? Do you want to know how much help we can be on a private? Well, road? it's a private road, so my question is this. Are we allowed and can we stop trucks from coming through our road? It's private. People cut through there all the time in a hurry because they don't want to wait for the light at, you know, Smithbridge. You see it every day. You, what are the... Uh... Well, my first question is, you mentioned early on something about construction, somebody's in, involved right. in well, the construction. Right, well, we're having an issue already. When they tore those buildings down, the defense company, they brought all their big, nasty trucks through there, parked them, dug big holes into the uh, driveway. On the private street? Yes, right. and tore it up. Now, I'm sure when the township man came, he says, hey, get out of there, You're not, you shouldn't be doing this. You know, there are certain rules here, but of course they've already done their damage. And um, I'm not standing guard, <laughs> you know? No, and even I, if I, I was, they'd just run me down. Yeah, I, the, the only thing we can look at is, is it's a private road, so we don't control that road. However, having said that, you yourself may have a private cause of action against the, the construction company or the trucking company that was parking the, truck, the trucks on that street. Right. And furthermore, we can maybe look at some of the developer agreements and see, you know, what language is in there that may be able to help you out. But yeah, I'd have to take a look at it and have to research yeah. it with the engineer. Well, I believe in part of what I was understood was that the, the planning for the construction was that they were not allowed to shoot across because their driveway to that new development is directly in front of our road. And what's going to happen is they're going to say, well, we don't want to drive all the way down and turn around and go back um, up since we're going mm -hmm. southbound. We're going to just cut right through here. That, that project is going to be before us later this evening. And I right. think if we had to add a condition that no construction access would be allowed on that private road. No trucks. Okay. I think yeah. that would be acceptable to the applicant. Uh, they're nodding like they were unaware of it, and I would think they might be so, but we could help you on that. You can, we as a township... At our expense, post any signs say no through traffic? Uh, if we put it on the uh, 202 right away, we, we probably could, yes. But not we can take a look at it that. Would, it would really help a lot yeah. because but it's very expensive <laughs> to be filling in deep, giant no, holes constantly. And I was going to have my whole thing paved. But when I got the expense and then I watched what was happening, no. I've been wasting my money because within... Okay. Six months, they would have had it torn off. Are, are my colleagues in agreement? We'll have Nate look if we can post yep. the signs at both ends. Uh, I would greatly right appreciate away, so that. So it's on, our, on, on the roadway property. We'll go from there. You, you're going right. to do a little more homework on it? I will. And, and maybe okay, the, and maybe the new applicant com is coming in. When they do their blacktop, they may want to give this young lady a deal that she can't refuse. Well, I would like that <laughs> because I'll tell you what, I would, I would love to have them fix it. <laughs> <laughs> because right. it's very expensive. No. Okay, if, if I could ask ask a question, please. Um, I'm up here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> I'm right here. I'm right here. You, you are the owner of the property. Yes. You have a deed? Yes. Does it talk about the private street and the obligation of the adjacent property owners? Uh, no, I don't recall it saying that. It just tells us where um, our property lines are. And we actually had them zoned out, you know, where they were staked out, and so we knew where our property lines were. Well, at one point in history, when that private street was created, uh -huh. there has to be a maintenance agreement for the adjoining property owners to maintain the private road. I don't even know the name of the man who owns the well, property. Well, it probably dates back many, many years. Right. Well, you said he would look into it, and we'll yeah. see what we can find out, okay, with the help of the engineer. But Clark, I don't here. mind maintaining ours. But I find it very expensive when you have trucks flying in through there and chopping it up because I have been maintaining it. If anybody stood in the road and looked directly straight down my road, you would see one side looks pretty good. The mm -hmm. other side's a total wreck. I guess the other solution would be if you want, I'm not trying to be, well, maybe I am. But, um, you know, if it were me, I might consider putting a little toll booth there and let them pay <laughs> to use the damn road. <laughs> I didn't know I was legally allowed to do such a thing. Well, it's your road. <laughs> Patrol of 202. I like it. A little bridge there. A little bridge there, yeah. 
And That's actually hilarious. Not to really be insulting, I'd make it cash only, no easy pass. And they could pay, and they could, and they could, they could pay for the pavement, right? <laughs> this Brewster's ice cream, I think, would be good. You know? Okay, Thank we'll, you so we'll get back to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Anyone else? Dave? Dave, your address again on Schoolhouse? Your address yeah. again on Schoolhouse? Your My address is there, yeah. Yeah, no, what is your address on Schoolhouse? Oh, 72 Schoolhouse Line, 72. Dave Cleary. Okay. Um, Katie Kinzel, the scholarship recipient, is a rock star to my son, Michael. Not only the group she's in, but separately, numerous times, she asked Michael to come run with him. In his last cross-country race last fall, she came out on her own on a Saturday morning and ran as a guide runner with him, and he ran as fast as 5K. And when he did the autism event the other day, the top of his dance card, was Katie and Ashley and Avery. They, she is a real good choice and, and really meant a lot to him and helped him grow and find his Great. capabilities there. A good yeah. choice. Um, and so I just want to say, unfortunately, her, Katie and her mom aren't here. Um, on the dogs on the leashes, that is a problem. And the other piece of it is, through the eyes of my son, he is not comfortable. He's six foot, 180 pounds. A dog comes running up to him. And I've seen him over at the township park in the summer. He runs laps there because there's a drinking fault and to get hydrated at at the dog park. So we'd go there for uh, hydration, safety. And people, even walking their dogs from their cars to the dog park, I've seen him dress down a lady. He just has this way of saying, put your dog on a leash. And the people are like, oh. And, and they and usually are pretty responsive, but that's important. Um, the other thing I wanted to thank uh, Vanita and Dana for coming out two weeks ago. Um, we had an autism awareness event at the high school track and appreciate you coming out and joining. I have something I need to send you an email and I was trying to find your personal emails in the registration and I didn't find them yet, but I, if I can send them to your um, business emails, we got kind of a recap of the stuff. And one of the interesting points that worked well, besides the outdoor environment and getting exercise, Michael's run at the track because it's safe and the fence around it, it kind of gets harder when you, actually the Concord Township Park works pretty well too, as well as the area out here, fence around the extreme when you're worried about eloping issues. Um, which is a, a problem with autism. Um, the state police were there this time, and there are two big safety issues there, eloping and wandering off. And kids, uh, adults with autism are seven times more likely to have an encounter with law enforcement. And oftentimes they don't communicate. Some are nonverbal. Um, or my son Michael's cognitively about a seven-year-old, limited verbalization. And so having that interactive discussion with families with autism and them supporting it was critical to the autism community. So um, thank the both of you. And if you don't mind, I'll, if I can send it just to these email addresses, I'll send Thanks for coming out and supporting the event. That's it. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll move on with the uh, business part of the agenda. First is the uh, uh, consent agenda, and we will be acting on the following items to approve the council public meeting minutes of April 4th, 2023. Dana, we have some expenditures for the month. Sure, the total expenditures is $544,322.65. That consists of April payroll of $180,434.34. Current bills totaling $197,609.25 and our sewer bills totaling $158,279.06. Okay, and we also, Mr. Gillespie, we have some certificates of payment. Okay, uh, certificate uh, number four for Old Philadelphia, a final payment in the amount of $10,839.50. And certificate number 5A, a final for ABLE fencing for the remainder of the fencing projects, $5,100. And certificate number 2B, which is a final for ABLE fencing for $936. Okay, we have no financial releases this evening. We do have to accept as complete for filing a final minor land development application. 
for Joseph Anthony Spa on Baltimore Pike. It's a parking lot expansion. We also are accepting, Larry made reference to this with regret, we're accepting the res resignation of Sean Lawler from the Planning Commission. We are also accepting a letter from the Concordville Fire Protection Association um, recommending uh, Dave Cleary to the position of fire police officer with the fire company. And John, I think we're going to award the bids for the uh, road program this evening. Uh, yes, uh, Township received bids on April 28th for the uh, 2023 road program. Four bids were received, ranging from 462000 up to $500,000. So our engineer is recommending the contract be awarded to Innovative Construction Services in the amount of $462,438. That's in the form of a motion. Okay, do we have a motion for the whole consent oh, agenda, okay. Benita? I so moved. We have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Nate, as is customary and usual, the Schoolhouse Lane and Baltimore Pike improvement update. Please. Yeah, I just checked uh, the uh, the update from PennDOT on our permit package is due. <laughs> God love them. They have 30 days to respond, and 30 days is tomorrow. So at 4.59 tomorrow, I'm sure I'll get feedback on our latest submission, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, and just bigger picture for those that are new to that, we have a, a permit package in the PennDOT for the um, formal installation of the median, uh, the temporary median that's at Schoolhouse in Baltimore Pike now. So that'll be permanent with concrete, things of that nature. It's a, it requires a PennDOT permit. That's happening. If they approve that permit, we'll then approach the council with uh, construction options maybe as early as this summer. Sorry, just to give you more color. Okay. Um, thank you, Nate. Zoning map update, Amanda, I think you were just going to tell us if I understand correctly, we colored it in with some new Sure. Color. So just like we got, you know, television uh, in color in the site, <laughs> we are finally going to have a zoning map with color. It is uh, very exciting. Uh, I know that seems not exciting to most, uh, but to me, that is very exciting. Uh, so with the recent uh, rezoning that we just approved, uh, Nate has updated our map with color coding per zone. So you no longer just have a black and white map. If you're in the R2, R3, C1, C2, you now have a color associated with you and it's very easy to find your location on the map. So uh, council just, I want it, just wanted it recognized publicly um, that uh, we have made updates. It's to the color. Um, and the recent ordinance we passed, we have marked in all the um, municipal institutional properties that the township has appropriately. And uh, there were two um, C property, commercial properties on 322 um, that had some rezoning as part of that ordinance. So it all will be updated. It will be available on the website. And um, hopefully people will find that helpful. Okay. Never thought we'd be so excited about a colored map, but anyway. Um, Number four, Pannoni updated proposal for the finalized design of Yacht Rio Trail. Mr. Gillespie, I think you reviewed the numbers. Uh, yes, the I scope did. had to change, so I'm going to hand this off yeah. to you. Yeah, what, what's happened, uh, part of the trail went through Pico property, and they have mandated a realignment for, for a portion of the preliminary design trail. So they need to redesign portions of this trail. So we have a proposal, and the updated proposal includes additional fees for the redesign and permitting. Uh, they're giving us a fee of $156,486. I met with the Pannoni representatives last week with our township manager. We went through each of the uh, intricacies of the redesign work and the costs, and they, they look reasonable, and, and I'm, I'm recommending that we go through with that. Also, I'm, I'm going to meet monthly with the engineers to track the progress in the billing for this updated proposal. We need, we need to get this project moving quickly. So. Okay, that's in the form of a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah, second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All right, resolution 25 of 2023, final land development of Premier A2 Chad's Ford LLC storage facility, 366 Wilmington Westchester Pike. Nate, this went through the Planning Commission and all the reviews. As well as the conditional use process with council. Okay. Um, I think normally I see the uh, council is here for the applicant. Uh, normally what we'll do is read this resolution uh, into the record, ask for a motion, and then we'll have any discussion. But is there, you had a courtesy copy of this, I understand. 
I do, thank you. Is there anything on there before we get started that you find and before concern we, to yourself? And before we get Fine. started, Mr. President, if we could, is it the council's intention to add a, another uh, clause with respect to Macomb Avenue? Yeah, I, I wanted to, we wanted to add some wording and I guess the council will have to agree on prohibiting the construction traffic that's gonna be generated by the development of the site from the use of the private road, Macomb Avenue. That would be acceptable. I, and again, just for the record, my name's Deborah Shulsky on behalf of the applicant. And I just wanted to state on behalf of my, my client here is who, is, who is here as well, as well as our engineer, that we're not aware of any construction activity. So um, might, we're not aware might have of been that. During the course of the demolition and coming from that background in that industry, they probably thought it was a public road and it was the easiest way yeah. to get from A to B. But I do have the confidence that if you tell your subcontractors and general contractors not to do that, uh, that should help alleviate the problem and you know, we'll go from there. We will certainly make sure that the contractors are directed uh, accordingly and, and I'm sure my client would be happy to share his information in case there's any future events okay. of that happening. That's a, that's a very good idea too, so you guys will be able to communicate directly. All right, other than that, I'm gonna read it into the record or is there something that's giving you guys agita or you're pretty good? We're good, thank you. All right, let's get it done then. All right, so this is the preliminary final land development approval of A2 Chadsford PA LLC, already recited the address and it's approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, compliance with all comments contained in the Pannoni review letter dated March 10th, 2023, attached to exhibit A. Number two, compliance with all comments contained in the Delaware County Planning Commission review letter dated January 20th, 2023, attached to Exhibit B. Number three, compliance with all comments in the Tom Comita review letter, March 9th, Exhibit C. Four, compliance with all comment in the Fire Marshal's email of March 9th, Exhibit D. Compliance with all comments in the Bradford Engineer, the Sewer Authority Engineer review letter of March 10th, Exhibit E. Number six, Compliance with all comments contained in the Township Historical Commission email dated January 26, 2023, Exhibit F. Number seven, applicants shall submit color architectural elevations and color board materials for review and approval by council prior to the release of the signed plans. Approval of the elevations and materials for the building shall be obtained prior to the issuance of any building permits. All building improvements are to be constructed as per the approved architectural elevations including screening of any rooftop mechanical equipment. Number eight, developer agrees to enter into a development and secure improvement security agreement prior to the release of the final plans, the signed plans. Number nine, developer agrees to the conditions outlined in resolution 32, 2022 regarding the conditional use approval for the self storage facility. Number 10, submission to the township of all required permits and external approvals including but not limited to the PennDOT Highway Occupancy Permit, the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, Sewage Planning Module Exemption, and the PADEP NPDES Permit prior to construction. Number 11, plans are to be submitted in electronic format acceptable to the Township Engineer. Number 12, uh, all an executed operation and maintenance agreement as well as contribution to the Municipal Stormwater Control and BMP Operation and Maintenance Fund is required in the amount of $8,937. Number 13, payment of an open space park and rec fee in lieu in the amount of $12,289.19 as per resolution five of 2023. They might've got off cheap because I think we're raising that motion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, we should have done that one first, Amanda. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, number 14, lighting and landscaping must be maintained per to record a plan and replaced in kind as needed. Any substitutions are subject to the approval of the township. And lastly, all deeds for the property, I shouldn't say lastly, number 15, all deeds for the properties, legal descriptions, easements, driveway easements, and stormwater maintenance agreements are be submitted for review and approval by the township engineer and township solicitor prior to release of the signed plans. And Mr. Donahue, Ms. Solsky, I guess number 16 would have to do with the, uh, traffic, the truck traffic. Is there some wording that you two are comfortable with since you guys get paid? Utilize a private road known as Macomb Avenue during the, this construction process. Okay. That's acceptable. Okay. And then there are some waivers from 169-H 
requiring a separate preliminary and final plan submission, and 148-308-D requiring sites within two or more stormwater management districts sub areas that run off from each sub you know what, area to drain into the same. If I can interject, we were able to resolve that issue. That waiver is no longer necessary. All right, so we're I was just going to mention that. Thank you. We're going to be I, only asking for the one Bless waiver, you. which is from preliminary to final. Mr. Chair, Mr. President, just a, a quick question on number 16 that we added. Um, I'm, con I'm just wondering if there might be continued traffic after the construction once the storage unit is open of people crossing over that road. And I wonder if it's something that might we want to consider at this point in time. I, I'm wondering if perhaps um, as somewhere in the building it would be posted that that is a private road and not used for public use. I think that if the construction traffic is um, told not to use it, I don't know how you could be responsible for telling the everyday user to use it when everyday users are using it now, I guess is where I'm going at with it. Can I, uh, let, let's get through this and then I have a question for the resident. Okay, so do we have a, we're, we have a motion in a second? Do we have a motion to approve this resolution? So moved. We have a second? I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Got a question though. If it's a private road, if it was ever caused to be shut down, how does that affect you? Okay. No, but I mean if uh, the property owner to the north owns half the road and he owns from this, but he owns from the southbound lane, the northbound lane to the southbound lane. You're good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. But Richardson's has his driveway is on the private road. Yeah, but not on the private road. Yeah, but he really doesn't have rights to that private road. We we ought to. I'll tell you what, Nate. We're going to come out and talk to you at the site one day because I'm getting confused. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll get to it. All right. Next is uh, resolution 26, which is an amendment to our fee in lieu. Um, apparently earlier this year, the first of the year, we do all the um, 
fees for the township for the year, and for whatever reason, I think Tom Kamita uh, missed the fee in lieu for um, contribution for open space for um, residential single family dwelling units. So uh, what we're doing is we're gonna be changing that in the ordinance and we will make sure that he is reminded in January again to do it again. But uh, we would be um, revising resolution five of 2023 to make the following changes, that the fee in lieu of open space would be $4,825 fee for a residential development per dwelling unit, $2,990 fee per duplex or twin dwelling unit, $2,300 fee per townhome, triplex, quadruplex, or other type dwelling unit, $1,385 per apartment condominium dwelling unit, and $1,265 fee for non-residential development up to every 3,500 square feet uh, of building or portion thereof. So do I have a motion to approve resolution 26 of 2023? So moved. We have a second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, resolution 27 to 23 has to do with uh, the Garner Valley School District. There is a sewage um, pump station there that we are going to be taking dedication of. And in addition to that, the township is gonna be purchasing a small easement along one of the driveways at the school district that will give us the ability to uh, it will give us the ability to uh, uh, start the project for the sewers for the Cambridge Down community. So do I have a motion to approve resolution 27 of 2023? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Um, at the request of the chairman and the zoning hearing board because of travel and other commitments by some of the members, they are requesting that we consider to add an alternate member to the Concord Township Zoning Hearing Board. And we are permitted to do that by um, resolution. So this resolution would merely allow them to have an alternate member. We will post for advertisement for the membership to the Zoning Hearing Board at a later date, but we wanted to get this out of the way first. Is there a motion to approve resolution 28 of 2023? Uh, just a quick question on yeah. that. Um, um, is this limit to one member? Pardon? Is this limit to one member? Currently? It's one, one alternate. It's one alternate? Yeah. It's not clear, not clear though, because it, 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 I have a similar question to Larry, because it just says intends to appoint alternate members, plural, hereby authorize the appointment of alternate members, plural, for three-year terms. How about, it just seems ambiguous. Change, take, take the S out of both of them, and are we good? Be one member, okay? And, and then does that alternate member, when that, when that alternate, how does that work? When that alternate member is present, they are what an acting you, member and the person not present is, is not? What happens is if <coughs> alternate member A gets appointed because someone is away, that member would sit with that case till its conclusion. So they would start with each, they would have to start with the beginning of each if case? They, if, if they only have two members showing up and they call the alternate member so they have a quorum, those three would have to sit through that particular case till it comes to its conclusion. Even if it ended with a vote. Is, it, is yes, the, the, al the alternate member who sits in on that hearing stays with that subject from beginning to end and, and would cast a vote on that particular application. Is that something that's, that's clear outside of this conversation so that there's no ambiguity for any I think Execution. the zoning, we're allowing an alternate member, but I think the zoning hearing board has its own rules and regulations uh, and that would be cor up correct. The, chair, the chairman of the zoning hearing board, if he discovers or determines that he's not going to have a quorum and he needs to, to call the alternate so the zoning hearing board can conduct their hearings, he then does so. That's what the rules provide for. And then that alternate would sit on that, on that night's scheduled hearings, he'd sit from uh, beginning to end and vote on that particular hearing. He doesn't replace the person who, who was missing for the rest of the term, so to speak. He just fills in uh, when they need to have a quorum. 
And the so the then that, that's confusing because that's that's different then, right? Because either either they sit the whole time, or if the next meeting that person that was absent is back, do we now have an additional no. member of the ZHB? No. no. So if you have hearing A and they're hearing hearing A on, in the month of June, and if hearing A would extend to the month of July for a vote or a continued hearing. Uh, the alternate would stay with that hearing. The, the, once the other fellow returns or she returns, they're not going to jump in on that particular application. They can't. But the MPC clearly sets, sets forth the guidelines for this. And there you as a council are just uh, authorizing whoever it is going to be who serves as the alternate so the zoning hearing chairperson can call on that. I individual. think we might even be in the minority of Delaware County by not having one. Um, I think we might be making this harder than it needs to be, but uh, they would sit through that whole hearing, and if the hearing's only one night, then they're only required for the one night. But it's just so they, they had to cancel a hearing recently for lack of a quorum. This way they would have been able to hold that hearing and keep the thing moving forward. Because in theory, if you don't have an alternate and you have a clock running, then you could, you could, have, a de you could have deemed approvals on applications. But but all the rules regarding how an alternate is handled are, are governed by the MPC then? Correct. So we don't need to specify that in this resolution? Right. You do not. Right. Okay, so then I, I move that we amend this resolution say member. to say member, okay. uh, singular, wherever it is. Uh, how, about, how about intends to appoint one alternate member? There you go. That's that's agreeable. The winner, winner in the clubhouse. So I'm, 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 I move that amendment. I think we need a second to vote so on the amendment. A, do we have a motion to approve the amended? I'll make a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify saying aye. 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 Mr. Crossan, you want to handle resolution 29. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I, about 18 months ago, Concord Township um, entered into a memorandum of understanding uh, with uh, Mark Wilcox uh, regarding preserving uh, 50 acres of land in the Ivy Mills area of Concord Township. That memorandum of understanding outlined a number of terms um, that we are now approving tonight in, a f in formal conservation easement documents. Um, so that is to preserve the 50 acres um, uh, I believe we have maps going up. Oh, well, there's a map over there. So you can see the 50 acres is the large green area uh, that is uh, on the one side of Ivy uh, Polcat Road, opposite the uh, historic structure where um, events are held and so forth. So that is already 15 acres that Concord Township holds the conservation easement on, so this will increase it to 65 acres. Again, this land, because it's a conservation easement, will continue to be owned privately by the Wilcox family, but we are purchasing the development rights for this land. I will note that um, there remains um, the option to develop two, up to two new homes on the 50 acres. There's a designated building area, um, and the uh, one home is able to be built within that area at any point. The second home would only be able to be built if the historic mill house that's currently sited on the property were to be moved across the street uh, with the other historic properties. Uh, that would be due to flooding concerns um, in that area. So that would ultimately be for the, for the preservation of that property. So if Mr. Wilcox were to, or some future owner were to move that um, historic mill house, there could be up to two new homes um, on this. In addition, we have uh, designated areas for trail access. Uh, both a local as well as regional trail access. Uh, the regional trail access would be for the Octorera Trail, um, which is the, the easternmost portion of the trail, which is um, further back in the design process uh, than, than what we were discussing earlier tonight. But it allows for future trail connectivity uh, through this property um, at, a, at a future time, and then uh, as well as a local trail connection um, within Concord Township. So the, the map we're looking at there, that yellow area is the local trail, the green serpentine area is the Octorera trail access, and the blue hatched area at the bottom is the potential building area. Um, uh, ultimately, um, 
we are purchasing this for $715,000, which is the appraised uh, value of this conservation easement. Um, and uh, it really, it, it builds on several uh, goals that were outlined in our recently adopted open space plan update, which is Ivy Mills is one of six hubs identified for conservation of open space. Uh, it preserves historic resources and provides for trail connections both locally and regionally. Um, and happy to, to know that this does bring up to 77 acres that are preserved in Ivy Mills. Um, so, uh, Mr. President, I so move uh, that uh, Concord Township uh, authorize, uh, accepts and approves the terms and conditions set forth in the Memorandum of Understanding and Conservation Easement, and authorizes the Township Manager to execute an agreement of sale which includes all the appropriate terms and conditions as approved by the Township Solicitor, and schedule a closing at the party's convenience. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you for coming out this evening. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox.